Hey everybody, I'm Lewis Bolden and welcome back to Solutionaries, the podcast. Today I am with my friend and colleague, Eric Sandoval. Welcome Hi. to the show. Oh, well, thank you. And we are looking back on our climate issue where mm -hmm. we reported on a number of things that are being impacted by climate change. A number of things that people might not think of, including coral reefs. Coral reefs. We've done a lot of stories on those. We have. <laughs> we have. Um, Eric, first of all, can you explain to people what's going on with Florida corals? It's not just Florida corals. I mean, it's the coral reefs off California's coast. It's the coral reefs off Hawaii's coast, you know, mm -hmm. which, which create the great surf conditions. And I think that's why a lot of people are actually paying attention to this, because yeah. it's endangering surfing communities. But it, you know, it's really a, a dangerous cocktail of things that are happening right now. We have global warming, which is warming the temperatures of the water. And we also have, uh, I just wanna call it discharge from, from lakes and streams and soil of uh, nutrient rich uh, particles, you know, the fertilizers mm -hmm. and basic chemicals that are leaching into these coral reefs and killing them. Um, you know, the, the warm water mixed with the fertilizers and things like that are just creating some awful conditions for these corals. And um, there's really a huge push now to help save them. Because it's not just pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. These are ecosystems. This is where fish live. This is where you know a, a whole bunch of marine sea life lives. So this is a huge estuary of, of wonderful sea creatures that are also in danger of dying as a result of this. And there is a big push to save the coral. You and I both reported on the Florida Coral Rescue Center, yeah. which was fascinating to me mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. Number one, it is in this warehouse district. It is completely nondescript. Um, and then you walk in and it's like walking into Oz. Like they turn on all of the lights for us and there's like this neon glow across the room. Well, it's like the blue lights behind us. Right, you right. Know? It's just this whole room full of, of aquariums and lights yeah. and, and you can really feel it come to life. And the yeah. life is literally happening right in front of your eyes. Explain to people what they're doing there. It's fascinating. Yeah, well, and jump in because I'm sure I'm gonna miss some parts here, but you know, they're basically ta taking little coral samples from uh, reefs that may be dying, may be, you know, in danger off the, off the coast, taking the viable samples of these pieces of coral, bringing it to this facility right by Orlando International mm -hmm. Airport in the warehouse district, and then basically watching it come to life and, and populate and, and repopulate and grow. And, and they're just letting the coral grow. And they're hoping that once it gets to a, a, a viable size that they can bring all this coral back to the ocean, back to the reef and hopefully replenish the coral on the reef. Did, is that good? Yeah, that, that's, okay. that's fantastic. <laughs> and you went to, I was looking at your story a minute ago. Did you go down to Miami where um, divers were? I did. You, okay. Yeah, um, that was uh, a group of veterans that I just adore. Mm -hmm. um, and they made it their mission basically to number one, they dive to clean up after humans, you know, old tires and, and garbage that's at the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. But they also have taken it upon themselves to um, check the condition of these coral reefs that are right off the, the coast. This one was right off Lauderdale by the sea. And what we watched is these divers going into the water and they had, I'm gonna use this as a, as a prop, but they basically had a piece of, believe it or not, a piece of paper in the ocean, mm -hmm. but it was you know laminated and they had a wax pencil and they go underwater and they look at the coral and they're basically making marks of what the coral looks like. You know, are there any you know, boat propeller strikes that are damaging it? Are they, is it bleaching? Is, is it you know, losing color? Mm -hmm. And they're also looking for the culprit in all of this and that's stony coral tissue loss, which is this bacteria that is basically killing all of the coral and that is the byproduct of this warm water and the fertilizer and everything like that so you know they're, they're looking and, and keeping tabs on this and then when they come out of the water they bring it to florida fish and wildlife and they say here's the report and they keep monitoring it and so at, at the rescue center when they are restoring the coral how often do they do and i don't want to put you on the spot but how often do they replace it and is there evidence that it really is 
growing in That's ways. the part they're looking at right now. And, okay. and the, it's, it's a gradual process. It's mm-hmm. not like they back up a, a moving truck to the back entrance and put all the aquariums in. They're being very selective in the samples that they choose to bring back out to the ocean. And I think it's pretty much a case-by-case basis. They're taking a small little sample, bringing it here, and then they stand back and wait to see if it repopulates. Mm -hmm. And the really exciting thing is about the Florida Coral Rescue Project, it's gotten so big that they're actually sending samples all over the United States. They're, Mm -hmm. They're growing coral in Nebraska at a school there. They're growing coral in Michigan at an aquarium there and they're reporting their findings back to the Florida Coral Rescue Center. It's really really an exciting thing to watch how all of these states where you wouldn't normally find coral. Right. <laughs> you're finding coral in the middle of a cornfield in Nebraska. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, when you think of Nebraska, you don't necessarily think about <laughs> coral. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Um, another thing that we talked about uh, in that episode um, was heat islands, mm-hmm. and you've done some reporting yeah, on that as well. Yeah, shifting gears on that. Yeah, so, you know, a heat island is basically this. If you've been to the center of any city, town, you know, wherever you live, Houston, Detroit, you know, Orlando, you feel the heat radiating off the buildings when you're walking down the street. It, it's not an illusion. Literally, it is hotter in a downtown core or in an area that is that has a lot of buildings than it is in the suburbs. That's why when you see the weather forecast on TV, you know, they say, here's the temperature in downtown Orlando, here it is in a suburb, mm-hmm. because there is a temperature contrast. And most of that is created by the buildings just absorbing all that heat and then radiating it off, off the buildings. So that is the not so official definition of what a heat island is. And you you know, there are all of these efforts to plant more trees in urban areas. Mm-hmm. And it's not, I, I mean, it's necessary. Absolutely. It's not just aesthetically more pleasing, it's necessary. Absolutely, and you may see in some cities where they're actually putting entire gardens and, and lawns in some cases on top of buildings. You know, mm-hmm. when, when they say rooftop bar, you think, oh, that sounds swanky. I'm gonna go up to the rooftop bar. When you get up there, there's planters, there's a grassy area for you to sit in, there's a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, you know, biological amenities, if you will. Mm-hmm. That's basically because they just absorb the heat, they don't radiate it back off. So it's actually cooler around that area. And, and that's basically the push to keep those downtown cores cooler um, and not so hot. And we've seen that in some areas that heat differential can be 10, 15 degrees. Oh, yeah. So that can that means a lot, especially to the people who live and work in a downtown area, and you know, and that even overflows into the people who may live near the downtown area, mm-hmm. because in a lot of cities, the communities that surround the downtown core are mostly, I would say, on average, lower income um, po- populations, and they're experiencing the radiation of that heat yeah. and their electric bills are traditionally higher because they're trying to keep their cool. So it's uh, you know unfairly targeting that population as well. And um, there's heat reflecting paint. Yeah. <laughs> the technology they're cranking out right now is just amazing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing. It's reflective paint. Um, we actually interviewed uh, a guy who has created the whitest white known to man Mm -hmm. And uh, he he touts it as a reflective white that, you know, basically if you paint a wall with his reflective white paint, it is literally going to um, reflect 99% of the heat instead of, I mean, sorry, absorb 99% of the heat instead of reflecting it. So it's basically going to absorb it. So it's. It, he, we'll see if he gets to roll it out. This is, this is a <laughs> university guy who's, who's conducting an experiment. He says it's the whitest white. Still, it shows that there is movement and there is excitement in this field mm-hmm. to make a difference and yeah. get results. And so I'm fascinated with this paint. Where will it be just on buildings? Is there talk of using it on streets? Yeah, or? so actually there are some cities, I think San Antonio, Texas is one of them, and they have basically rolled out a different kind of paint where they're painting entire streets a lighter color instead of the dark color. And they're getting results with that, and uh, they, they see a difference. So more to come on that. More to come, absolutely. Oh, and one thing I wanted to touch on and was the eternal reefs. Um, So I'm circling back a little bit now. 
That was, um, I think it was Lauren who did that story um, out of Jacksonville. Okay. Um, as a way of restoring reefs, people are actually being buried, so to speak. People are joining their, the reefs, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ba they're basically billing it as eternal rest. You know, you can yeah. plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Planning really ahead. But yeah, you can basically be become part of this reef you know it's 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 a whole contraption a whole you know rig that they basically put your remains in and it becomes part of a growing kind of reef right off the shore and so what happens is people are cremated mm -hmm. and they take the ashes and, and push melt them together. the ashes exactly. into and that's fascinating and there are 3,000 of these eternal reefs around the world right now just amazing yeah it just shows where Ingenuity really kicks in if there is a need, especially with this, this reef issue. We've seen yeah. so many ideas and programs pop out of this. I mean, sending it to Nebraska and, and Michigan, that, who would have ever thought? Right. But it just shows when push comes to shove, we can make a difference. Yeah. And that is something to think about. Um, you know this. Um, I lost both my parents within a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And my mother's side of the family, they're all buried. Mm -hmm. And my father's side of the family, they're all cremated. Really? Yes, yes. Um, and so it just made me think that it's something else. And my dad wanted his remains sprinkled in uh, the Mississippi River. Okay. So having this as an option, an eternal reef, I can't remember, it's a little pricey. Um, it is. But it's definitely something to consider for people who definitely know they want to be cremated. Uh, yeah, and make sure you tell your, your loved ones ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they that, can probably make that choice. <laughs> yeah, just, just make sure you spell that out because that, that'd be a heck of a thing to pop up. <laughs> yes. But look into it. It's, it, it's, it's a yeah, very cool absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Really very neat idea. Cool. I think we hit on all of it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Always a I pleasure. appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure. And thank you guys for joining us so much on Solutionaries, the podcast. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.